here with a table of spread and the feast of the Lord. You're welcome to come to those service. And right now, I'd like to have a response from one of our visitors. Hallelujah. It don't have to be a visitor. organization that caters to the needy. 
Her goal, along with her husband, is to inspire, to uplift the people, and also to do the will of the Lord. And they don't stop, they don't plan on stopping. Words in her vocabulary that describe her knowledge and understanding of God, energy, sincerity, eagerness, are all important expressions to describe the sentiments of her heart for the knowledge and understanding of God's word. More importantly, is being God's servant and proclaiming the gospel and in resonating the gospel to all people who will listen. I present to, I present to some, but introduce to most of you, prophetess evangelist Cynthia Simpson, a woman on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ. And let us please stand and receive her after the selection as she comes. Thank you.
such a lovely spirit in here. <laughs> I, I feel good. <laughs> I, I got my praise on. I love the praise and worship the Lord. Let's give the ministry of music and the praise team and the choir a hand. The anointing is on you, sister. It's on you heavy. You've been anointed to do that will that God has called you to do. That's the ministry of music. See, everybody can sing and some uh, been called, but some just anointed to do the calling that God has put on them lives. And guess what? It takes the anointing to destroy the yoke. Uh, thank God for Sister Teresa for uh, making a way for me to get say, what is it that you want me to, sister? You know, there was a lot of things going on that, you know, she wanted me to get here, and I understand, but my concern is about the souls. I'm not concerned about the money. I know God will take care of me when he called me to do this work. I was concerned about the souls, and she said, I said, what would you like to see be done? I would love for you to get here and pray over our wins. And that's a good desire. So I said, I'll come and I'll pay my own way. Because you know, and I'm, I'm going to preach, we as prophets, prophets and ministers, and we got to get out of that thing about the money. Because if you do the will of God, he'll take care of you. When I really realized that he had called me into the prophetic realm, I was going to do his will. I was going to decrease and that he have his way. And I'm a strange prophetess. So I don't know if you come here thinking I'm going to prophesy that you're going to get a car, you're going to get a house. Because if you live right, he said he would hold no good things from them that walk up right. I came to talk about sin. God show me sin and the things that keep you from doing the will of God in your life before you show me anything else. So that's the kind of prophet as I am. I've been called by God to empower men and women to go out and do the work of God. See, you get it in here, you don't just sit on it. You go out. I go to the prisons, I go to the hospitals, I go all over because it's outreach ministry. We need to get out of that. And if you do the will of God, I guarantee you, he will take care of you. My, my, my. Except you turn to Ezekiel, she gave me a topic. That's a good topic. And I'm glad she's talking about the prophets, the false, uh, Ezekiel is talking about the false prophets, the priests, the, 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 the community, the people, the leaders, pastors. So this is a good topic. And I said, Lord, why would you have me to come to Flint at such a time as this? He said, because I equipped you to come. The number one most, the number one capital murder city of the country, the country. Every church in Flint ought to be open. Pray and intercede. You said, well, it's, it's killing it and it's all over the world, but honey, you are the number one in the country. And Michigan is number four or five. I mean, Detroit. That's something to pray about. It's praying time. It's praying time. Ezekiel, the 23rd chapter. Wait a minute, I'm sorry. The 22nd chapter. Let me get my. Started at, she told me what to start at. I think it was the up in up here. Thank you, 
standing in the gap. Standing in the gap. I like this because one thing she said about coming before God before unforgiveness, coming before God. You cannot come before God any kind of way with stuff in your heart, mess in your heart, coming before God and talking about I'm interceding when you ain't got it right yourself. You have to make sure you're in right relationship with God to be an intercessor. Before I was called anything, I was called to serve and intercede for the people of God. God is looking for people today who are standing Your money, your tithes, 
Because you can pay time all you want to. But if you ain't living right, you ain't going nowhere. Some of you just pay money just to be seen while I'm, I'm doing right and still straggling the fence. Your business. Your job is to pay your tithes like the Lord said. You come. 
think trying to cater to you. He's not trying to fix you up or cater to you and pity pat you. Your job is to listen to him and obey. If God gave him a vision, he didn't give it to you. He gave it to him. He didn't show it to you. You want to trust and pray and to see for the man of God. Stay off that phone and intercede for your pastor. That's what get us in trouble. The telephone. Talking about the man of God. What God told him. You think he's telling you. He has a call to do. He's been appointed by God. Thank you, Jesus. How many times minister has stood before their congregation and told them that God is not concerned about their sins as long as they give their tithes? That's a lie from him. God is concerned. How many ministers have stated to their congregation that, that life, lifestyle choices are acceptable to God because uh, we must be a people that accept everyone and everything? That's not true. When we change God's word to fit the needs of the day or to fit our own choices, we are doing a violent thing to the word to com commit a violent towards God. And you won't have to answer to God. God is trying to tell us that we cannot afford to take this calling and do what we want to do. Missionary, uh, evangelists and teachers. That's your job is to teach the truth. Not to fit it to, to concern some sin. You don't fail to meet up to what you're trying to say and what you're trying to do. You know you're not supposed to have a one wife. Amen. You know you're not supposed Thank you. 
you, Jesus. This is the society that we are living in right now. When God revealed this to Ezekiel, it had gotten worse. You see, when the society is going down here fast, you expect that the men and women of God, those standing in the gap, would be there to tell the society that they are going down wrong. But what you trying to in, in, you trying to get in with the world? It's still an eight coming up to your level. You going down to where they at? Yes, yes. Still, are you waiting on God and trusting God? Shows. Still are you praying? Crying out to the Lord and make an altar at your house. 
in your bedroom, hang up the telephone. Watch all that stuff on TV. It's contaminating your spirit and you can't go before God and nothing can happen. Instead of you listening to the music and telling God to speak to you so he can give you a song so when you come before the congregation the anointing will fall so heavy yokes will be destroyed. You're taking X pills. You're lacing joints. You're smoking blunts. You're straggling the fence. Everything is wicked. And you come in here and you bring all and then when the pastor get up, he feel all those heavy spirits. Yeah. Somebody should have been walking around for Sunday school, anointing this house. Oh, Casting out spirit, laying hands on the pews, telling the Lord to say everything, everything. Yeah. It's sin in the camp, honey. Yeah. It's wickedness. You don't like her. She don't like you for what? Yeah. We are one body with mind, one spirit. He had a calling on his life. I got a calling on my life to 
And it's supposed to change today. Tell somebody it's going to change today. I'm going to stand in the gap. It's going to change. You're going to stop hating on that sister. Hadn't done nothing to you, but she just trying to live right. You're going to stop trying to hate her. You're going to stop trying to hate that deacon because he don't want to have sex with you, honey. God said, that's enough. It's sin in the camp. It's sin in this camp. It's sin in this camp. And it's got to go. The devil is a lie. You got no work to do, Flint. You got to get with the other churches. Witness, y'all got to get together and do something. This city is a mess. The state of Michigan is a mess. Out of the five states in the, in the country, you got two of them on there. Detroit and Flint. Y'all don't have time for foolishness. It's time for prayer. You ought to teach your children how to pray. I teach my nieces and nephews how to, how to say, praise the Lord, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, everything, because if you don't, they're going to be cussing. Where they get it from, they heard it from you. They heard you say it. They heard it. They heard you cuss daddy out. They heard you talk about that sister. That's what you do. Women's church 
and that's a bad, a bad sliding position. When you're out of church, you're backsliding. God is not going to give you no job where you can never come to church. That ain't God, honey. Because if you pay your tithes, you live right, he'll give you the desires of your heart. It's sin in the camp. Some of you, God is really blessed. I just want to encourage you to keep going. Some of you, your kids, as you say, I'm living safe. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do with that child. Just won't stop selling dope. I won't stop popping pills. Mm -mm. God says, keep praying and keep fasting. You got to fast, honey. Some things come up by fasting and praying. Some of you don't want to fast. But you want to do everything else but fast and pray. This is a prophetic word for you. You need to start fasting and praying for your pastor in a city like this. That after he empower you, That you would take it and go out, try to win somebody in. The city is on, is a disaster. The sin is taking over. Flint. You just blessed to be able to bless somebody else. You're not to get it and sit on it. Stand. Hallelujah. Have any altar workers? If you want prayer, I could call some of you out, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let the Lord tell me what to do. Some of you need prayer. You need prayer. You need prayer. You need strengthening. Young lady, you've been on my heart since I got in this in that chair. You, you. You've been on my heart heavy. The Lord loves you. He wants all of you. He loves you. He wants all of you. People looking, they don't count you out. God said no. It's not over. God's going to do a work in you. He's going to clean you up like never before. He's going to purge you. And, uh, if some of you worry about her, you need to be worrying about yourself. You ain't got time to be looking at nobody else when you got stuff in your life ain't right either. But God, you've you been crying out for a long time for help. And you've been hurt. But God says it's over today. You're going to be able to do what you want to do for a long time. You've been trying so hard to be holy. And the devil just keep coming after you. Lying on you. Saying things that's not of God. Accusing you of things that you didn't even do. You done went to bed many nights. Cried. Sometimes you didn't want to come to church. Your head was down. But honey, keep coming. Because you know what God said? He said, I'm taking fingerprints off of you. Everything that touch you, they're going to have to answer to God. But he wants you to keep your spirit clean. Don't let nothing contaminate your spirit to keep you from God. Lift up your head. Oh, we got somebody. It's over. Some places you used to go, he said, don't go no more. Enough is enough. You remind me of me when I was in the world. I was home for more God, but I just didn't know how to get it off. But it's in the house. 
It, it, how to get to God is in this house. There's some people in here living saints. But I'm going to cast out every spirit coming against you and coming against the will of God in your life. Because God said, You will live, say, You will do the work He's called you to do. Lift up your hands. Shut up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because he is going to give you the desires of your heart. 